Hey there everyone, this video is going to be about 10 ways to disinfect and or purify water. And while most of these you probably already know, there's bound to be a couple that you don't. And there's also some really good information on each one of these. So with that, let's dive into the first one right here, which is a common one that I'm sure you know about, and that's boiling water. And this is one everyone probably knows, or everyone should know at the very least. And this can be the most effective method when it comes to killing these microorganisms. Now, the one thing this won't do is remove anything. So even though it will kill or inactivate these microorganisms and protozoa, they're still going to be in the drinking water. Or anything in the drinking water uh, that was there beforehand is still going to be there. So you may want to pre-filter the water uh, before you actually boil it to get out any sediment, any you know leaves or anything like that, depending on where you got the, the water source that you got this from. Now to do this, what you need to do is bring the water to a rolling boil for around a minute. Now with me, I'm at higher altitude, so it's a little bit longer than that because the boiling point of water is a little bit lower up here. And it's also important to note that if water is in short supply, if you are in a survival situation in some sort of disaster scenario, you're going to want to make sure you pay attention to the water because the last thing you want to do is let that water sit there and boil for five or ten minutes and all that water evaporates and you're losing your precious resources. So make sure uh, you're right at a minute, uh, right around a minute, just enough to kill everything and, and make sure every your water is good to go. All right, so the next one on the list is filtration systems. You've got the Sawyer Minis, you've got the Catadines, you've got the Life Straws, all sorts of different things. The big Berkey water filters for in-home, uh, the zero water pitchers for in your refrigerator, so many different types of water filtration systems. And honestly, these are, uh, you know, the, all of these are really important, but these may be, you know, think about what your situation is and what type of filter you would need, because these will, unlike the boiling water, these will remove some of those contaminants. Now, you don't want uh, just some mucky, old, grump, grubby, dirty water with a bunch of leaves and sticks and stuff in it and try to put that through a filter. But if there is sediment in that water, those filters will get them. You need to think about the type of filter for your situation, though, uh, because some filters will get those microorganisms, the Giardia, the Cryptosporidium, but they won't get chemicals and contaminants like you would see it in a city park or somewhere like that that has pesticides and things like that in it. Or a, a disaster happens, a, another train derails, and the water your water situation at home, you need a really, really good water filter for that. So keep that in mind as well. That Sawyer Mini is not going to get everything. So think about your situation. Do your research on the type of water filter that you're going to need. I've got a great article over at survivalsprepper.net that I will link to below that goes through the best way or, or picking a water filter. Uh, some some tips for preppers on picking the best water filter and what different water filters are going to do. But a water filtration system, I think, is important to have in conjunction with, uh, you know, understanding and knowing some of these other methods. All right, and then you've got your DIY filtration, and this is those those field expedient water filters that we see from time to time here in the preparedness community and even the, the bushcraft or wilderness communities where it's basically three levels, three stages of a filter. And with these filters, they, it's a makeshift filter using layers of cloth, sand, gravel. You strain out all the larger particles. Now, this isn't going to get those really tiny microorganisms, but it is, like I said, it's an emergency filter filtration system that is going to be better than nothing. And this is also a great example of pre-filtering, like I was talking about with boiling water. You get all of these things out of the water by having a, a layer on top of this funnel that, get, that grabs the bigger junk, and then a layer below that that gets some of the smaller junk, and then finally that sand layer or something, or charcoal, something that grabs those really small particles uh, but not down to the micron size, uh, most likely. This is one of those things that it's important to understand, not just because you may need it. You may be in a bug out situation in the middle of the woods and have find yourself needing to use something like this. 
but you get a better understanding of the filtration process when you understand how to make your own DIY water filter. And this is something that most people have no idea about. They just, the water comes out of their faucet, it's clean and they're good to go. And they would have no idea how to clean water or, or maybe they think a coffee filter is going to cut it and it absolutely isn't. All right, so the next one I've got on the list here are UV water purifiers, the SteriPen. Now, while these are pretty expensive, they do a, a good job at killing those microorganisms and, and protozoa and all that. Again, this is another one that is not going to get those contaminants, but it does a good job of killing all the, all the, the living things in the water that could do you harm. Now, the SteriPen is effective, but it does require batteries or, you know, solar power. And like I said, it's a little bit expensive. I think it's up around the $200 range at the time of this video. But they are effective. The, the downside of these is that you can't really treat large amounts of water. So in a camping situation, in a bug out situation, something like that, where you're trying to purify a liter of water, something like that, these are going to be effective. If you are in a grid down situation where you're talking about gallons and gallons of water, you're going to need something a little bit bigger than a SteriPen. But these are effective at purifying water. So the next one on the list here is SOTUS, the solar disinfection of water. And this is basically letting the sun do the work for you. Now, with SOTUS, what you would need is a clear plastic bottle with water, uh, and then you leave it in direct sunlight for, you know, six to eight hours, basically all day. And it's got to be direct sunlight. Otherwise, it's not going to be as effective. Uh, and this kills the pathogens sort of through the, the same method as before, but it's ultraviolet radiation. And now, keep in mind, this isn't going to be 100% effective. This is one of those... Uh, in case of emergency break glass type situations. Another drawback is that the water has to be pretty clear because if it's not clear, it's not going to work the way it should or it can take uh, longer. So maybe the whole pre-filtering thing would also be good for this, but still, even with pre-filtering, that water could still be cloudy depending on the source you got it from. Uh, and this may not be effective. But again, uh, this is 10 different ways to do it. And, and as preppers, we need to know all of these different methods because you just never know when one thing is not going to be available and you're going to have to do uh, what you can. All right, so the next one on my list here is I've got water purification tablets. And a lot of us preppers have these in our bug out bags and have them uh, all over the place pretty much in, in all the different bags we have and in our camping supplies and all that. But these are small tablets. Uh, some are chlorine, some are chlorine dioxide. You've got micropure tablets. Uh, they can be added to water to kill these microorganisms. Now, there are a lot of different kinds, so you really need to pay attention to, uh, just like the water filters and everything else, you need to pay attention to what you got, what it's going to be able to do, and, and correlate that with what you need it to do. So not all are created equal. You need to make sure you've got the, the right kind. The chlorine dioxide are going to be better than the chlorine. And from what I've heard, I haven't tried them out yet. The micropures are, are the best on the market right now. Uh, it's an also important to make sure you're following the manufacturer's instructions with these because they are different depending on what you're using. The recommended dosage, time, uh, the contact time, how much you use, the water temperature requirements, and all of those things play a factor in uh, what you're going to need to do with each of these. Some of these tablets that are more effective against all of these microorganisms are going to take longer. They're going to have to sit there longer. While some of them that aren't, you're, if you're not worried about Giardia and Cryptospridium, it may not take as long. The temperature of the water, all of these different things play a factor. So make sure you understand uh, the directions on how to use each of these different types of water purification tablets. So on to the next one, we've got iodine here, and this these come in tablets or liquid form. And basically, iodine works the same way as these other tablets. Typically, you'll need to add a certain number of iodine tablets or drops to a specific amount of water, again, just like the other, other types of tablets. And then you wait about 30 minutes for that water to be disinfected. Now, most of these, they have a separate neutralizing agent to remove that iodine taste 
after you've you've let it sit that 30 minutes because iodine can leave a uh, much like bleach iodine can leave that you know that undesirable flavor although in an emergency situation uh, if you are thirsty it's probably going to taste good anyway just not as good as clear drinking water also with iodine tablets they shouldn't be uh, used by pregnant women or, or people who have thyroid conditions or people that are allergic to iodine so uh, you know, keep that in mind as well with iodine, if that's something you're thinking about. And also, it shouldn't be used for long term. This should be an emergency use type thing. It shouldn't be used if it's a grid down scenario that's lasting months and months and months. It shouldn't be something that you put in your water supply continuously. Uh, it's something that is, it can lead to health problems, and it's something that uh, should be used sparingly. All right, so the next one here is probably the most effective method, but but not the easiest, and this is distillation. Uh, distillation is the process that separates uh, the water, turns it into vapor, and then you collect that vapor, turn it back into water, and what that does is just gets the water itself without all the impurities, without all of the, uh, by boiling it, you, you kill all the microorganisms and all that, and you get rid of all the other things. So this is truly going to purify your water. Now, for as a, from a preparedness perspective, there there are ways you could do this in your home. The one method that comes to mind is you take a large pot, uh, you fill it with water that you want to distill, and then you leave some space in that pot uh, so it doesn't boil over. And then you put a smaller pot to make sure and make sure that it doesn't touch the sides of that pan. Uh, then you turn the lid upside down in that pot and let it boil. And then that water collects on the lid. You can throw some ice on top of the lid to make it cool down quicker. And then that water coll collects inside that smaller pan. And then you have perfect, absolutely clean water. Now, this could take some time, and this is a lengthy process when you're considering, you know, an SHTF situation or disaster scenario. So while it is the most effective and your water is going to be the safest by using this method, it's not the the most, you know, it, it may not be your go-to method because it's uh, so time-consuming, because it takes resources. Uh, you're talking about fuel, whether uh, if it's a grid-down situation, you don't have electricity, you're looking at using the grill to do this, or you're looking at doing an outside fire, something like that, or a, a hot plate, you know, maybe a hot plate if you've got plenty of solar power. But it is going to take that. So it's not the most effective method as far as utilizing the resources you have. But it is going to be the most effective method at cleaning your drinking water. All right. So the last one I've got here on my list, and I kept this till last because I think this is one that a lot of people really haven't thought about. And that is potassium permanganate. I have done a video in the past that goes through all the benefits of potassium permanganate from getting a fire started uh, to, you know, cleansing a wound uh, and disinfecting water. Now, this isn't a 100% effective, and there are plenty of other, all the ones that I went through in this, this video are probably more effective in this. But I do carry a small vial of potassium permanganate in my bug out bag just because it is good for uh, different things. You know, if I need to start a fire, if, if I can find some glycerin, some brake fluid, something like that, uh, I'll be able to get a fire lit. It's a good fire starter. If I cut myself, I can, you know, dissolve a small amount in, in water and use that to disinfect a wound. Now, with water, you've got to use a very, very small amount. And I did this video a while back. And what you want to do is use a, a tiny bit in your water to make the water just turn slightly pink. In this video, I, I used a little bit too much, actually. And you can see I barely used any at all. You need it to be slightly pink. The purple uh, it is, is far too dark. The purple could be more for uh, cleansing a wound or something like that. But you don't want it to be purple. You want it to be slightly pink. Another thing with potassium permanganate is it's not particularly effective against Giardia and Cryptosporidium. They have that outer shell that it's not going to do a whole lot with. So if that is something you are concerned about, and it could be if you are in a bug out situation, getting your water source from somewhere that's a, a natural source that has animals around it that may be, you know, droppings in it or, or anything that could be contaminating that water with, with beaver fever, uh, which is the Giardia 
So keep that in mind for this. This is not effective against that. But again, like a lot of these different methods, they are a better than nothing uh, type of method. So always have your first choice and then have always have these in your back pocket if you need to. All right, so the last one I've got on this list, this is sort of a bonus one, and this isn't necessarily a way to clean your drinking water, but it's really good advice, and that's just have the water stored in the first place. Try to avoid being in a situation where it's going to be necessary uh, for you to have to boil water, for you to have to use a water filter, for you to have to use these water tablets. And I know in preparedness, it is that situation where you just never know what's going to happen. But the best thing we can do at this point is make sure we have that water stored. Make sure we have that backup plan in place. We've got enough water to last us as long as we feel like we need to. And we won't have to go out and filter, uh, you know, drinking water from the creek or lake or wherever. Another bit of advice I would give is in your area, make sure you're looking around for those water sources that might be cleaner than other water sources where you're going to get that in a disaster situation where you may need to. You just never know uh, with things that are going on in the world, uh, train, like I said earlier, train derailments or the water supply getting contaminated and you've got to figure out what you're going to do. Uh, having that water stored in the first place is going to help you with that and understanding the other places you can go will also help you with that. Now, this is just 10 different ways uh, to purify water, and it's quite a few, uh, quite a few of them. I know there's a few other things that you could do, pine sap, pine tar, things like that, uh, that will, I, I don't know how effective or how efficient that would be, but that's another one. But if you have any ideas or any thoughts on this, any other methods that I didn't talk about, uh, let me know in the comments below. But I think I'm done with this video today. Until next time, take care and prepare everyone. We'll talk to you all later.